In this video, we're going to look at a document called Sample Size that is available in your Module 3. And basically what this does, this document has been around a long time, um, is it helps people to understand the relationship between sample size and population. Population is the population that you're trying to represent. So let's say we're talking about fifth graders in the state of Texas. That is in this area under the big capital N. How many you have to have to represent that population is called a sample. That's the little n. And this is the way that this used to be done. Um, you can, I'm going to show you a way to do it with the computer. But basically, this is just a quick reference guide. So let's say that there is 100,000 fifth graders in the state of Texas. You only need 384 of them to represent that population. You only need a sample of 384. So you don't have to sample all the fifth graders. There's not a need to. It would be too expensive. So why do it? What you need to notice, and the, the reason for having this, is as your samples or your population size gets smaller, you have to have more in your sample. So let's say you take an average classroom of 25 people. For you to make any kind of claim about it, you have to have nearly all the students in that class in your sample to make any claim about the population. So there's a, this constant relationship between these two. Now, the reason for having this is one is in an actual research situation like the one that you're going to be in, you, you need to get as many people to participate as you can because you're not going to have that large of a population. Even if you had all the sixth graders in your building, that might be 120, you need a pretty good sample to get as many as you can. So that's one way to do that. The other way to do it is you can go on the internet and you can just put in sample size calculator into just a Google search and it'll bring this up. The, the challenge to this is you really kind of have to understand a little bit about confidence intervals, confidence levels, which are complicated kinds of terms. But as a general rule, the confidence level is the odds of being able to get another sample that just looks exactly like the one that you have. And generally they're either at 99% or 95. Confidence interval is how much, when they respond, how much error there is in that. So this is set at 5. When this starts up, it's blank. This is plus or minus 5%. So now, what we want to do is put in, and 5 is a safe number. You can put in 4. Now, let's say you had 120 sixth graders. You want to know what sample size you need to, to calculate that, and it says 100. Now, let's go back to our other one. So now there's only 92 is on the old sheet. This is saying you need 100. That's close enough. You can change some of these parameters, though. If you want it to be more accurate, it's going to have more people. If you're willing to make more mistakes, it'll let you have less people. So you, you can do it either way. This, these websites will explain how these work, what all this information means. One of the sessions we'll have later on is exactly what this stuff means. But I want you to be able to, in terms of the discussion or the reading that's on page 195 in your book, this is what they're talking about. Is it adequate? Well, it's adequate if you, it, it, if your sample represents your population very well and the numbers are right. If you have a lot of diversity in your population, if you're 50 percent uh, white, 25 percent Hispanic, 25 percent African American, then even if you have a large sample, your sample needs to be 50 percent white, 25 percent Hispanic, 25 percent African American. It needs to be what's called a representative sample, not just a big sample. And that roughs up the discussion on sample size.